Hello and welcome to the latest of our interviews with the candidates for this year's primary elections in Lincoln County. Our candidate today is Mana Snodgrass. She is a Democratic candidate for magistrate and she is an incumbent. A native of Lincoln County, she resides at Sweetland. Mana was first elected in 1988 and she is married to Donald, has been for almost 39 years. They have two sons, Rodney and Gregory, Greg, uh, two grandchildren, Kristen, Kirsten and Morgan, and two wonderful daughter-in-laws, Jennifer and Mary. She's the daughter of Russell Buck Atkins and the late Victoria Atkins. Mana Snodgrass, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, what made you decide to seek a seventh term? Well, I was raised in a family that not only believed in community service, but they practiced it. Uh, I was taught at an early age, it's what you can do for your fellow man as well as your community and your county. It's quite like John F. Kennedy and ask not what you can do for your what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I had the education and I also had the background. I had worked in the Sheriff's Department, I had worked with the County Commission for a limited amount of time, and I worked in the Circuit Clerk's Office. So when Magistrate Vandalin retired, I saw an opportunity to try to make a difference and apply what I had the knowledge of and what I'd learned to do a community service for the people of Lincoln County. Okay. What personal and professional qualities do you feel you bring to the role every day? Professionally, I would say the greatest asset is the experience. Uh, time and experience is always the best teacher. I brought with me today not notes but my credentials that I have collected over the past 24 years and I'm very proud of those. I have attended and successfully completed and passed 23 magistrate education classes for which these are the certificates. I also am the only candidate that is certified through the American Academy of Judicial Education. I'm very proud of that because when we first started in the magistrate program when I was elected in 88, we had a lot more intensive education program than what they have now. Right after the election was certified, we went away for two weeks to school. Once you took office, you went again for two weeks for school. You were tested, and these weren't open book tests. You actually studied, and you had to pass your tests in order to get your certification. And I'm very proud to say that I passed the first eight and I received my certification right off the bat. Uh, I've also attended other education classes that weren't mandated because I felt the need. I went to the involuntary commitment, which is your mental hygiene class. I hold a certificate in here for that. I've attended many domestic battery classes and on the coalition of domestic violence. I've also um, done a lot that I felt was a good thing to do to further my education. I've tried really hard to stay up above the laws, to study the laws so I would be able to know the law changes because they have changed so dramatically since I took office in 89, January of 89. Uh, it's just, it's hard to realize how much they have changed, the penalties and the laws, and I constantly try to study and stay up on those so that I can do the best job I can for the people of Lincoln County. Okay, our third question. Um, you're obviously running for a seventh term. Um, could you describe maybe some of the changes, maybe not so much that you would make, because you would assume you've been there, that you've made a lot of changes. Would you like to comment on some of the changes that maybe you've seen or that you've implemented down through the years? Well, really, there's not a whole lot of change that the Office of Magistrate can do. Okay. Because we're a limited court of jurisdiction. What we can do and cannot do is governed by the statutes of West Virginia. So there's not a whole lot you can do other than to try to be fair and honest. I think some of the changes that I've worked hard at is when you do the arraignments and when you do the video arraignments is a lot of people like to read word for word what mm -hmm. it is. I've done them so long that I know them by heart. So I like to put them in simple language, everyday language that everybody can understand. Because after all, magistrate court is the people's court. Mm -hmm. It is to be the people's court. So the average citizen can come in and have access to the judicial system. Now we're the beginning of the judicial system. So anything that we do that people aren't satisfied with, it's appealable. They can appeal it to the circuit court mm -hmm. judge, which in West Virginia is trial de novo, which means it starts all over again, unless it's a jury trial and he would listen to the record. Um, the changes, I think I have tried to streamline the paperwork. Now that is to a limited amount because our paperwork is mandated mm -hmm. 
what forms we use by the Supreme Court. And I've utilized that. I've got that down to a science to where I have it already pre-set out what forms are needed for each one because there are so many different forms and there are so many different crimes and different crimes require different forms. So I learned to put them all in a bundle and then pull out what's needed so you don't forget them because you don't want to violate anybody's civil rights by not making sure that they understand what they're doing and what they're signing. And I think that's very important because to me, if I go into a setting that I'm not familiar with, mm -hmm. it's startling. People are there at probably some of the worst times in their lives. Mm -hmm. They're upset, they're agitated, and I think being able to diffuse the situation is a good thing and being able to make sure that they understand that they are there and what their rights are, what they can expect. Now, we're not allowed to give legal advice and we're not allowed to answer questions pertaining to the case, mm -hmm. but we can tell them what the protocol is, what the procedures are, and what they can expect each step of the way. And I think I've done a good job at that. I've tried my very best uh, to make it a people's court. The Lincoln Journal has reported frequently on the scourge of prescription drug abuse in Lincoln County. In what ways would, in what ways do you, as a magistrate, work to help tackle that problem that has ruined so many lives in our region? Well, first of all, magistrate court, we have limited jurisdictions. There's not a whole lot we can do to implement change. If you want to know my opinion, mm -hmm. that's probably a bad mistake, asking me, being the Southern Baptist woman I am. But the war on drugs, we've lost. Okay. Let's face it, we've lost the war on drugs. Now we're at two points we can do. We can work with prevention for our youth, for our children, and we can also deal with the casualties of war. By that, I mean there are so many families that have been affected by drug abuse. It's not just the children who have abused drugs. You have parents who abuse drugs, and, and children are in that environment. They're in that setting. And so there are other people that's been affected by thefts, by crimes against their property and against them when your drug addicts are trying to not only attain pills, but to acquire something that they can exchange for the pills. So I think the main thing is we have to go with prevention and we have to go with how we're going to deal with the casualties, like I said. And it's a bad problem, but it's a problem that the whole county has to get involved in. I think reporting is one thing, being willing to witness, because the law enforcement can go out, but there's just the limited things that they can do. If nobody will witness that crime, if nobody will testify to that crime, then it's hard for them to be able to prove, because the burden of proof is on the state of West Virginia. And they have to be able to prove this stuff. Just saying that my neighbor deals drugs is not adequate enough mm -hmm. because every person is innocent until proven guilty. And like I said, the burden of proof is on the state of West Virginia. On each crime that contains elements, these elements have to be met in order to prove that person guilty. So yes, we all need to work together on this. We need to do reporting. We need to be willing to stand up and testify or give information that is credible, that is usable in court. And I think getting back to the basics is the main thing. We have tried so hard to do things that is not working. Now we have to back up and try something else. Our court system has two drug courts. We have a juvenile court, which encompasses Lincoln and Boone. That's a very good thing because we're starting with the youth. That's where it needs to start. Mm -hmm. It needs to start at home instead of the court system. But that doesn't always happen, so it comes to the court system. But the drug system in the juvenile is a good thing. The adult drug court mm -hmm. is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. We may have 25 people on it at a given time. In the long, prolonged period of time, we may have three or four people that successfully completes that. But that's three or four people that we have brought back into society, made them a productive member of society. We've gotten them off of drugs. We've alleviated a burden on a family that was already there. And that's wonderful because I remember several years ago, and I can't tell you exactly what year it was, but several years ago we had like 20 or 25 within a year and a half of suicides and drug overdoses. We're a small county, you know? That's a horrific number for such a small county as this is. So yes, we need these problems addressed. They need addressed with the legislature 
but there also needs to be alternative sentencing because it costs us forty-eight fifty a day to keep a prisoner mm -hmm. in jail. Um, the last six months alone, we spent like $186,000. A small county like this, $186,000 to house prisoners. Mm -hmm. Our jail that services our county is Western Regional Jail that's located in Barbersville. It was built to house 444 inmates at a time. Do you know how many we usually have there? Anywhere from 650 to 675. We average, Lincoln County averages 25 to 30 prisoners per day. This is a burden on the county. I think the last audit that we had, which is not up to date because you know how the audits mm -hmm. run year behind, we spent like 480 some thousand dollars in one year mm -hmm. to house prisoners. And I think we all try to assess the crime, the, uh, the chance of reoccurrence, the seriousness of the crime, the threat to the community in order to utilize the jail. Mm -hmm. But that's an excessive amount of money on a poor county. It's a burden. Final question. Lincoln County is currently in the midst of another election abuse scandal. The former sheriff and county clerk have pleaded guilty regarding their involvement in the absentee ballot conspiracy of two years ago. As a candidate for county office, so not so much as a magistrate, but as a candidate for county office, in what ways are you working to restore confidence in the electoral process? I think, first of all, like I said, this is the seventh time I have ran for magistrate. Uh, being a judicial magistrate, our rules are totally separate, so you can't really lump us together as a county because what we do, we have to abide by the canon of ethics, we have to be aware of the judicial investigation, which means we are not allowed to campaign with another candidate, mm -hmm. we are not allowed to uh, oppose or endorse another candidate. So basically what we have to do as a judicial candidate is we have to go out and campaign for ourselves. And that's what I've done. I footed my own bill. I always have. And I'm proud of that. I don't care a bit to stand on my record. Now I'm not going to tell you that I haven't made mistakes. I'm not that naive. I have. But I can tell you that they were not intentional and they were not deliberate. And the office of magistrate is an office that a person could easily abuse. I have not intentionally abused my office in any way, shape, or form. What happened, I hate it. I hate it really bad because I love Lincoln County and I hate the reflection it puts on Lincoln County. But the only thing I can say is I am me. I can only answer for myself and for what I've done. And I don't care a bit to do that. I will do that. As my daddy always says, you know, you can lock me in a hen house, but that don't make me no rooster. So I will stand for what I did and answer for what I did. Uh, I love Lincoln County. I love the people of Lincoln County. We have some of the finest people here anywhere within the state. And I wouldn't care to challenge that. And I'm not ashamed when I go to school to stand up and say I am from Lincoln County. And it's a shame that we get a bad reflection. But we don't get any publicity on the good things that are done here in the county. The good people. The majority of our people are good, honest, hard-working people. The only thing they want to do is provide for their family, have a home, and live, you know, to the best of their ability, just like the rest of us. They're simple like me. They're hard-working people. And I hate that it happened, but there's nothing I can do about that. And like I said, I can't make a comment on that because I could just answer for myself. And that's all I can do. Well, the thank you very much. Is that all? I can't so. talk no more. Can I see? That concludes our latest interview <laughs> for this year's primary elections. Look for more interviews at our website, www.lincolnjournal.com. Oh, <laughs>